Good morning. This is Destiny and it is a Saturday. I always say a beautiful day. This is October. We're into a brand new month. October 5th, 2019. And today I'm going to do a very touchy topic. And it's not to offend anyone. It's not to put anyone beliefs down. I don't believe in doing that. I won't do that. This is something that I have been appointed to do. And this is my assignment. I'm going to be looking at scriptures from the 1611 edition of the King James Version Bible. This is one of the latest, the oldest versions of the King James. Also, we have our newer updates of the King James, and a lot of these say revised, and a lot of our translations today, you will see revised editions. So, anytime you got revised, that means it's been altered, changed, things have been taken out of or added to. I want to know what the divine source, the power of God, that you create a universe, has to say. I mean, we may not get it out of the books, even the, maybe the oldest or even the revised copies, but we can always get it from our divine source, our connection with him, with our true connection with him, with the universe. He talks to us through signs, synchronicities. He talks to us all the time through nature, and he reveals things to us, okay? Because man, when they get their hands on anything, it's no longer perfect. Okay, I'm going to get into this, but this is going to be really hard. I'm just showing you the Bibles right now. But this topic, and I got notes, and I'm going to have to be looking away from all of this because this is a lot of notes. This topic is going to be called, You Are, <laughs> let me see it right. You are God. You are God. And I know a lot of people are like, what? And you're, they don't flip their ears all up and their brows don't fail down on their top of their cheeks. Hey, well, hang on before you click, click me off. Hang on. You're not awakened yet. <laughs> you can't not be awakened if you frown at this topic. And those that who are spiritually awakened, Keep listening. Keep listening, okay? And those who cannot accept this subject at all and it's just like, hey, it's too much over your head, then it's, you're not ready. You're not ready for the spiritual awakening of the divine power of the universe, okay? So, I'm just going to do what I got to do. I've been called to do it. I have been... Wanted to do this topic for a very long time and I uh, didn't know how to really put this out there in front of my audience because I know it was a touchy subject and I'm not doing it to hurt anyone. I'm not teaching this to defend anyone or go against anybody's belief because I do not believe in doing that. I, I, I truly respect everybody's belief and I believe everybody has that right to their opinions. But I'm just doing my assignment that I've been called to do by the universe. So, I was looking into the King James 1611 edition. I want to see what, compare what the scriptures were saying comparing to the newer version of the King James Bible. And uh, I wrote it down, so I'm going to read the scriptures. They're just the books I want to show you. There is a scripture in Psalms 82.6. And in the older I mean the older King James Version, it says basically it says the same. It's just that the alphabet letters are a little different because there are certain letters back in the older days that we did not have that they have been added to today's society. Okay. But 82.6 says, I have said, ye are gods and all of you are children of the most high 
I have said, ye are gods. And all of you are children of the Most High. Then there is another scripture that they call the New Testament over in John. And I got this out of the New World Version of the King James Edition, Revised Version. But it basically says the same. And it said, Jesus answered them. Is it not written in your law? I said, ye are gods. So it's really saying the same thing. He repeated it twice. Psalms 82, 6 saying, you are gods. John chapter 10, verse 34 in the New Testament is saying the same thing. You are gods. And you have to really understand that. It's not talking to you running around telling going out into the uh into the world, stepped up in everybody's face. I'm a god, I'm a god. No, God is in you. You are your greater and higher self. And I'm gonna get into the, all, all that later. But then there is another scripture, and I have to find that one. And that also was in 1 John chapter 4, verses 4 through 6. And I will speak on that later. So let's hop into this because there's a lot of information. I want to get this all out. Also, I'm going to bring in to you the a lot of books that were taken out of the Bible. And there is a a, a, a group of books that was called the Gnostic Teachings. And there was the Gospel of Thomas. And I found that very interesting the way this conversation with our higher conscious, we call Jesus, he was speaking to Thomas in, 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 in this collection of teachings. I think this was very interesting because now I'm always going to tell you, I believe truly that the, the Bible is more so to teach us our higher consciousness state of being. And it's not like what a lot of us have been taught in our Christian faith through our lives and whatever religion that you may be from that is teaching uh, the faith to believe in the things that, you know, you have been taught. The Bible is really pointing to your divinity as you are God, because the, the God is within you. The kingdom of God is within you. And I truly believe that the Bible is pointing out a higher constant state of being, but we have been taught a lot and many times in our Christian faith to believe in the lower density, our lower ego state of being. Then we're going to let's get into it. The Gospel of Thomas. I'm just going to read something that was caught my attention that was very intriguing. And he said, he was talking about our Christ conscious Jesus. And these sayings he said to Thomas, Didymus. And he said, whoever discovers the interpretation of these sayings will not taste death. Jesus said, your higher consciousness, your Christ consciousness, those who seek shall not stop seeking until they find. When they find, they will be disturbed. 
When they are disturbed, they will marvel. Marvel. And will reign over all. After all, they have reign, they will rest. Then Jesus said, If your leaders say to you, Look, the Father, the Father's kingdom is in the sky, then the birds of the skies will perceive you. If they say to you, it's in the sea, then the fish will perceive you. Rather, the Father's kingdom is within you. And it's outside of you. See, the, the Bible is telling you who you are. It's pointing you to your higher conscious self. Everything has to start within you. All your answers of who you are. All your answers to your life's purpose. It's all within you. Once you find yourself within you, everything outside of you will be revealed. The kingdom from within will come to the outside and reveal everything to you. When you know yourself, then you will be known. And you will understand that you are Children of the living Father. But if you do not know yourself, then you will live in poverty and you are poverty. And we talked that many times. You become what you think. You become what you speak. So we have to be careful with our words. You become whatever you say that you are. Whatever your beliefs are, whether it's good, bad, wrong, right, ugly, dark, whatever it is. Those are all dualities. You'll become that. But the Christ consciousness, Jesus said, the person old in days won't hesitate to ask a little child seven days old about the place of life. And that person will live. And we talked on a video a couple weeks ago about never dying. Death is an illusion. And uh, once we come to know who we are, once we become to step into our Christ consciousness or our God consciousness, our higher state of being, and we begin to believe everything what the Creator had created us in His likeness, image, and we believe those things, and we are connected with the divine power, the divine source of the universe, we will become one and in sync with everything, with nature. We don't die. We transcend. We, we continue to transcend. Go from one place to the next. From one life to the next. Whatever that he has for us to do, that's what we do. We never die. We continue to live on. And for many of the first will be last. This is what he's speaking. And he said, we'll also become a single one. And I keep telling you all, we are one. There is no separation in us. The separation only comes when we separate ourselves, when we divide ourselves with different religions, different faiths. We divide. We argue, we debate, we dispute, and we bring the division. But we weren't created to be all in a loop, a box of different pieces, different varieties, we are created as one. We may have different journeys. We may be on different paths. He may have given us all different assignments, but it's all going to come together. So just be patient. We're all going to come together. He's going to show us our oneness, our oneness with our God consciousness state of mind, our one with the Christ consciousness, our one with the divine source and the power of the universe. So hang in there, hang in there. Go back to reading what the Christ consciousness Jesus said to Thomas. In verse 5, it says, Know what is in front of your face. And what is hidden from you will be disclosed to you. For there is nothing hidden that will not be revealed. You better hear that. 
For there is nothing hidden that will not be revealed, and there is nothing buried that will not be raised. And I found that really deep. That was a really good deep teaching. But the thing that got to me the most was this teaching of the uh, Gospel of Thomas when in Christ consciousness, Jesus was speaking with him. Verse 1 and verse 113 really threw out the message. And I don't know if you all are going to catch it, but listen to what verse 1 says. Whoever discovers the interpretation of these sayings that he was speaking, these sayings are the hidden secrets in the Bible, or the hidden secrets that's in our life, if we will ever discover these teachings, we will not taste death. We will not taste death. Then verse 113, the God, the, the Christ consciousness, Jesus, speaking to Thomas. And they asked him, his disciples, they said, when will the kingdom come? And Jesus said, it will come by, now let me go back. And he said, it will not come by watching for it. It will not be said, look here or look there. Rather, the Father's kingdom is spread upon the earth and people don't see it. I like that because it's so true. Everything is spread out upon this earth, but we refuse to be awakened to the truth. We refuse to catch on to the vision when someone comes in. They share the word or they share the light of putting something. We want to keep our heads buried in the sand and, and we want to keep the shades over our face and we want to keep our ears and our, and our hands and our ears and we don't want to hear this. But this is the time of our spiritual awakening. And just remember now, you can't go around here thinking that you can wake up people. You can shed light. You can share revelation, your experiences, but in the appropriate time and season, which is a time for everything, the divine power, your God, our God, our source and our higher power, he's the one that will bring the awakening. If you reject anything, then you stay in the state that you're already in and there's no awakening for you at all. So let's get into this really good topic. And I'm going to close out on that topic with the talking, with the Gnostics teaching, the talking of the gospel to Thomas from our Christ consciousness, Jesus. So I'm going to go down here and now let me bring something else to you. And I'm going to open up a little more understanding about the Christ consciousness because we've been taught that Jesus a lot of different things and I am not out here to defend nobody this is just teachings I was taught this I was taught these things about Christ about Jesus but now as I am no longer in my slumber and sleeping stage of my life I'm not going around here and just selling for what people are telling me but I'm studying and I'm looking for answers. And I'm looking for answers into nature. I'm looking for answers from the universe. My God, higher consciousness is speaking to me. My gut intuition is revealing things to me. I'm no longer depending on man to tell me who I am. Man to define me. He does that. The universe. He knows everything about me. Everything within me is already been revealed within me, but I have to connect with the divine source. I have to connect with the higher conscious. I have to connect with the Christ consciousness. That is the Christ conscious that we call Jesus. It's within us. So, 
Let me tell you what the Christ consciousness is. It's a state of awareness of our true nature, our higher self, and our higher birthright as children of God. And you heard what he said in Psalms 82.6. I have said you are God's. And all of you are the children of God, the most high God, your divine source, your higher power, your divine creator. You are children of the most high God. You are God. You are who I am. You are me. I am you. I am in you. So Christ conscious is a state of awareness of our true nature, our higher self, and our birthright. As children of God, it is the highest state of intellectual development, emotional balance, and spiritual maturity, and is sometimes termed the Christ state. Christ, C H R I S T E D, Christ state. And we've been taught in the New Testament about Jesus being our greater, higher power. But Jesus was human. And I'm trying to make sure I say this right. But he achieved this in his human life according to how the Bible was written according to how we were taught. He, he achieved this. But the whole concept of this is that we have to come to that place where they are showing us Jesus achieving this higher, greater consciousness state of being. Come out of the Father. We are from Him. He is in us. We have to attain and achieve that greater, higher consciousness in ourself because we are no more and no less than who he created us to be. So we have that power and that right to do that. The Christ consciousness, it has been taught that the key to achieving this higher and greater level of attunement is to, is to use meditation. That's how a lot of our teachings, our guru today are teaching us. And I truly believe in that. A lot of meditations because we open our hearts and our minds to the universe, to the power of our divine source and our greater and higher power. And we open up ourselves to our Christ consciousness state of being because we're moving from our ego side of us, our ego subconscious state of us, that we lived in all our lives, that the world part of us, we are moving out of that state of being. And we're moving into our greater and higher conscious. And how we do that is we have to come to the place of love and peace within our heart. Our heart center is our place of love and our peace. And once we get to that place, and then our hearts will be open, our minds will be open to who we really are. So, there is this book that was written by this man named Paul Sully, and he talks about the Christ consciousness. And if you don't understand about the Christ consciousness, go out there and Google, YouTube, it, search it, understand things before you really try to jump off into it to tell somebody something about something or you reject the information, do your own research, study, search it out. And then allow your gut intuition to reveal the truth. Because the gut intuition will not lie. It's going gonna, it's gonna to reveal the totally, absolutely truth. Your God consciousness in your universe and your higher self, it will bring everything to you because it's already in you. <laughs> So this, this man, Paul Selig, he talks about Christ consciousness 
And he gave us a lot of information in his book. And his book's called I Am the Word. And it's a very great, interesting study and reading. You might want to go and Google his name, Paul. His last name is spelled S-E-L-I-G. And the book is called I Am the Word. Great book, great teaching. And you might want to pick that up. He's a very accurate in, in, in the studying and teaching that he's teaching from a lot of other things that I have studied and read out there with other people's teaching. He is on point, very much on point. But I will sum up and greatly simplify what Paul's core teaching in the I Am the Word like this. And it's saying people function at different frequencies or energies and most people operate at a lower energy guided by their ego which is their false self and while others are able to tap into a higher frequency or into a higher energy because this energy is known as your Christ consciousness that is your crown up there. Your crown sharper, the kingdom of heaven within us. That's your heaven. I keep telling you about. That's your Christ consciousness state. And if we can truly grasp this and get out of this teaching that we were taught in our Christian faith about Jesus and compare this to what he's really saying about our higher consciousness state of being, we may can get a better revelation and knowledge of this okay also the spiritual guy paul he explains a whole lot of this in his book and like i said you don't want to not to understand it better so i would suggest that you do go and search for this book the i am book by paul to S-E-L-I-G. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, but that is the name of the author and that's the name of the book. So pick that up. Let's get deeper into this. I'm going to talk about the keys to Christ consciousness. The keys to Christ consciousness. Christ is a consciousness. A frequency an offering to man from the creator to align to Christ is, in essence, the vibration of God as realized in man. And I, I, I might have stumbled on that, so let me repeat that one. Christ is a consciousness, a frequency, an offering to man from the creator to align to for us to align to come in sync with come in connection with Christ is in essence the vibration of God as realized in man the Christ vibration does not belong to Christians and all times we talk in church you know Christ is connected with Christians because in Christian you will find the word Christ. It does not mean that. The Christ vibration does not belong to Christian because it said Christ that was attached on to your Christians. But however, it is a frequency of consciousness that was manifested in the form of Jesus. It was manifested in the form of Jesus. I'm telling you, the teaching that you were taught was not quite accurate to the way that you, if you really allow your God consciousness state of mind, your, 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 your universe, if you do not allow your gut intuition to reveal this, you can continue thinking on those levels of your Christian beliefs the way that we were taught on the Bible. The Bible is not all that we were taught it to be. 
is speaking more of spirituality, your higher and greater conscious state of being, your higher frequency, your divine source and power of the universe. You are God. It may be hard for some of us to swallow, but you are God. I just gave you the scriptures. Go back and look at them. Psalms 82 and 6. Go back and read it. John 10 and 34. He spoke it itself and it's telling you who you are. You are God. You are God and you are children of the Most High God. Why is it so hard to understand that? Why is it so hard that it offends you? That it, it ruffles your feathers? It, it upsets you? The Bible said it. I didn't write this in the Bible. The Bible said it. The Bible said it. The old version of the King James, the 1611. Your revised versions of the Bible, it tells us the same thing. Read it. Read it. Go and look it up. The Christ vibration. I must say it again. It does not belong to Christians. It is a frequency of consciousness that will manifest in the form of Jesus and by others in different names over history and we have come to know a lot of different names that when we start talking about our Christian faith, Jesus and God, we get all kinds of names out there. I'm not hooked on the names. I'm not all brainwashed on the names. All I know is I have a divine higher power, a higher source. I know that there is a God, a higher power within myself. If I don't call him God, if I don't call him Yahweh, if I don't call him Yahuwah, if I don't call him Jesus, if I don't call him all the other things that people are calling him, or Buddha, or, or Muhammad, and all of these different things, he's my higher and divine source. He's my greater, higher consciousness, state of being, my Christ consciousness. We got to get away from Names and arguing and debating and fighting over who is right and who is wrong doesn't matter. Talk to the universe. Allow your gut intuition reveal those things to you. Get out of your emotions. Get out of your feelings. Get out of your hurts. Get out of you being told that you're wrong and you're not accurately teaching this. The universe is the only one that can tell you the truth. The whole truth and nothing but the truth. So help the Christ consciousness within you because the kingdom of God is within you. The greater one is in you. Greater is he that is in the world. He is in you. You're greater and higher yourself. No one is without Christ consciousness. So how in the world that you think that you can separate yourself and disconnect yourself from the creator who created you, your divine source and power. I don't get it. 